Hello, hello, hello. How's everybody doing? So, this is not my usual stream time or location or what have you. This is um, this is going on on YouTube. Now, normally my streams are all on Twitch.tv, but we're open on YouTube right now. Um, and this is a public stream on YouTube. Usually, I don't have any public live streams on YouTube, just the way I'm set up with Twitch. But uh, I do them occasionally as one-offs. So this is um, essentially, um, I'm a member of the uh, Tomlin Harmonica School. Absolutely phenomenal online harmonica school and community. Um, some great, great stuff happening there all the time. So if you're not, if you're interested in learning harmonica and you're not a member, I would encourage you to check out TomlinHarmonicaSchool.com. But uh, they had a Q&A today with Todd Parrott and they were chatting about uh, country-tuned harmonicas. And uh, someone, someone in the chat was asking how you do it. Todd did a great job sort of explaining the, the basics of how that works and, and how it can be done. So um, I thought we'd actually do one. It would be kind of a fun thing to do. It's not a video I've done uh, before or anything. I, like I, I think I've done one of these on stream before, but just as a part of a longer stream. So this will be kind of a fun, fun one to do. So what I'm going to try to do is um, I, might, I might hold off just a little bit. And if there's folks that pop into the chat on YouTube... Um, then we can go from there. I'm just going to make a quick comment on here that we're good to go. And I'll throw over my overhead camera. We got a few harmonicas I might work on. And we'll try to do this a couple different ways. Uh, let's, let's switch the overhead camera so you can see kind of what I'm working on. And, do, 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 do. Uh, let's see. I'll just post that I'm live over there. I'm just going to post there just if, if anyone has any questions they can post in the live chat on YouTube because unfortunately I will not be able to see comment well I don't know if I can see comments on the harmonica forum as we go that would be interesting I've never really looked into that um, I don't think it updates live but it might be something I have to play around with I'll keep an eye out for it if I get a notification that there's a comment there um, I'll try to take a look if you happen to be on YouTube um, there should be a live chat so we can go from there um, I am typically a Twitch streamer, so I stream on uh, twitch.tv slash woozle effect. That is typically where I am um, for my live streams. But uh, yeah, this is kind of a fun one. I thought I'd do it. It's a little easier to do in sort of a public space on YouTube. I don't want people to have to sign up for accounts just to see this. I think this is a good, a good piece of information for anyone who wants to try a new tuning um, about how easy it can be and um, some of the tools that you might need, but um, I think realistically, you can keep this pretty limited. You can get away with um, essentially a file. You'll need some sort of file. I've got a, um, got a Grobe file here. This is one that I ordered from Andrew Zajac's store. Um, he's a Canadian customizer, fantastic customizer. I think he's got some, uh, actually I've seen some of the videos that he's done some Q&A sessions here on the Tomlin Harmonica School before, so. Um, that's an uh, absolute phenomenal resource. But uh, he's got some files there, and I'm sure you can get stuff from like Rock and Rons in the States and a bunch of other places. But you're looking for a Grobe file, something that's light. I can't remember the, the, the grit rating or the how coarse this is. It's a fairly fine file. But um, if you look at his website, I might be able to find a link for that and post that on the forum but, uh, for some recommendations. But you want a file that's going to shed a lot of the material so that if you're using this a lot, you're not gumming it up all the time and having to buy new files all the time. But um, I got this file. I got another one that, you know, I just got from a uh, Lee Oscar set that was uh, forwarded along to me. I used one, but uh, should do the trick for sure. But yeah, just a simple a file will do the trick. The other thing you can use is a, um, you can use a ceramic file. So something like this thing is a ceramic file. This is a, what is it? 1400 is the style. What grit is this? I think this one's a fairly light grit. Maybe it's a heavier one. I do some stuff work on stainless steel, so yeah, this is a fairly heavy one. This is the, oh no, a light one, four hundred. No, heavy the other way around. So yeah, you can use different grits of these adjustments. These um, so this is a eight hundred. This is a twelve hundred, right? So depending on how fine you want your tuning to be, 
Um, slower going, but uh, much more accurate, right? And coarser. I, I work a lot on stainless steel reeds from Sadal, so Sadal reeds need a little more grit, and I pretty much can't touch them with, with ceramic if I'm not using at least the 400 grit, but it, uh, it's a fairly straightforward process to use a ceramic file. Some people find them a lot, a lot smoother, a lot cleaner. Um, and I tend to agree. I, I find them, I find them pretty good. Let's see here. Let me just put this back together. So yeah, these are some of the things you may or may not need some sort of file. So here's a ceramic file. Here's a, uh, a grow bay file. The other you can use, I think that what um, Todd was showing, I just tuned away from the screen when he was showing it, uh, was a little one of those little handheld rotary tools that I had at one point. Uh, although my battery died on it. So I'm sure, oh, it's just sitting on the other shelf over there. But yeah, one of those will work pretty well too. I can grab it actually. These are, these are actually really great for like a handy kit if you're doing this in the road. It's got a little bit of battery left in it, but uh, they're pretty simple. You can buy these from, I think uh, Todd said he got this from Harbor Freight. I know I, I just bought mine on Amazon, but they're inexpensive and uh, pretty easy way to quickly make adjustments to the tuning of a reed. Um, does the trick until the battery dies. This one's actually good. Yeah. Batteries come back to life. It just takes double A's. But they're inexpensive, and if they stop working, you can really just get another one without any, <laughs> without too much panic. Oh, look, now the battery's dead again. I guess it depends on how it's connected. Yep. It's like the old school flashlights. You can shake them and wiggle them, and eventually they come back to life. But this one, I think this one's done. We probably just use the last little bit of its juice just to make it. Oh, look, it's even corroded. No, no. It's got a corroded battery there. All right, cool. So we're not gonna we're not gonna use this today, but uh, essentially it's a pretty easy uh, alternative. Uh, it's handheld. It is quick. Um, some people caution against rotary tools in general because they they can add a lot of heat. So it just depends on what you're doing. If you're doing a lot of tuning, I mean, this definitely can speed up your process, but it can also be damaging if you're not careful with it. Um, I've been using uh, a handheld, what a handheld, um, it's a tabletop device. You can buy these for like estheticians will buy them for, for doing nails. You'll have little attachments, little Dremel tile attachments with sandpaper and stuff like that. But this is a, um, a silicone polishing disc. And I find for the stainless steel reeds that I retune, this works really well. Keeps things nice and smooth and you don't have to, you don't have to really fight with, uh, fight with things. You can adjust the speed on the one I've got so you can you can change things. But I'm gonna to try to do it just with the file and keep it uh, keep it simple, I guess, and rather than uh, complicate things. So um, what we'll do then, got my camera all knocked around here. <laughs> okay, so um, I think what we'll do, I think I'm pretty sure I haven't touched this golden melody apart from some basic stuff. It's in Richter tuning, I think. Yeah, it's just in standard Richter tuning. So that, this is a B, this is a B harmonica. I thought it was a B flat, but it's actually in the key of B. So that's the, the hole we're gonna be worried about today is that five draw, right? Which is the minor seventh. Okay, and all we're gonna do is raise that a half step so we get the major seventh, right? And then we'll have a B country tuned. Golden Melody is a good candidate for that. It should theoretically have already been tuned in uh, equal temperament tuning. So um, it's fairly straightforward. Let me just double check. I want to make sure if there's anyone who wants to catch this live that they're here. Uh, if not, we'll move right along. And if you have any questions, just feel free to throw them in the chat. I'm happy to answer them. If I can, let's see here. Is this working? Yeah, that's working. Okay. Like I say, I usually stream live on Twitch, so I, I got a different chat interface that I'm having to interact with that's a little different than what I'm used to seeing, but I think we can work with that. Okay. Good. Yes, everything looks like it is working there. Fantastic. An error occurred. Hmm. 
I'm just going to refresh my thing and make sure I'm actually online. Perfect. It is still working. <laughs> Thank goodness. I was going to have a little panic attack there. I thought it wasn't, wasn't functioning. Okay, so here we are. We've got a golden melody in the key of B. And like I said, we're going to be changing five draw from its current note. Let's get a tuner up here for you. Uh, let's open up a software tuner. Uh, Chromatia tuner is the, the one I use. Chromatia tuner. I think they've just released version four. It's a pretty slick tuner. So we're somewhere in the neighborhood of E5, right? So in B, we'd be playing in uh, the key of F sharp in second position. Not a super common key to be playing harmonic in, but you know, it's one of those options. But there it is. This E note that we want to bring up to one step sharp of that, which is an F. Okay, so we're going to bring the E up to an F. So let's open it up and look at the innards and see what we can accomplish there. Good to have some kind of mat to work on. This is a, something that, for soldering, really, and, and working on electronics. But I find it's really nice because it's got a little uh, little space there where I can keep my, my screws sort of separate and they're not bouncing around and falling all over the place. It's the middle of the day here, just after lunch here in Russell, Manitoba, Canada, and my little guy's upstairs with my, with my wife. So uh, and we're letting the dogs in and out of the house. So you may see, hear some commotion. I usually stream in the evenings when kids have gone to bed and things are a little quieter, but I had some time to do this now. So take the cover plates off carefully. You just don't want to don't want to catch the reeds, especially the bottom reeds. Okay. So it's been a while since I've opened up a uh, golden melody. There we go. All right. So pretty straightforward. This is the, the layout that we need to work on. The nice thing about a, uh, doing this country tuning is that you don't actually have to take the covers off because the reed that we want to access is on the bottom on the draw plate. It is this reed number five right here. So because this is the reed that we need to work on, um, it's not like on the uh, the upper plate where it's nice to be able to take the, the covers off or take the plates off the comb to do this. You don't have to do that. Um, there are ways to tune it without taking it off the comb, but it certainly makes things easier. But on the draw plate, you don't have to worry about that. That's kind of nice. Um, now, it's, I'm using a lifter here. Again, this is just sort of a, just a piece of shim stock or um, a feeler gauge. This uh, kit, this came in a kit of stuff that I got from Andrew's Ajax again. Um, but you can use a feeler gauge as your support here. But I think, like Todd mentioned, you can just use... A piece of paper. I think the old Adam Gussell trip trick is a piece of receipt paper, which is a nice thin piece of you know reliable paper, I guess, for the, for this kind of thing. But you can slip that piece of paper underneath. It's also a good way to make little simple adjustments to your gapping in a gentle sort of way. So if you want to do some gapping, that if you need some gapping work, that could definitely help. Um, let me see here. So this could be all you need to support the reed so that it doesn't slip back down into the slot while we're doing our retuning. Uh, in fact, that's the way I'll do it for now, just to make sure that uh, it's done in the simplest way possible. We're gonna use a file, okay? Um, you could use a rotary tool. So we're gonna do this, um, we're gonna tune it up. Now the physics of this is pretty straightforward. When your reed vibrates, okay, the tip, of, well, essentially it's a pendulum. It's sort of like a pendulum. But anyway, it's got mass and it vibrates. Um, so there are different ways that we can change the pitch of this reed. If you want this thing to vibrate lower, uh, at a lower frequency, essentially what you want to do is you want to weaken the bass or weight the tip. Essentially what that does is it shifts the balance of the reed towards the tip by, like I said, either adding weight to the tip or taking material away from the bass. And when you do that, you've increased the, uh, the inertia that the tip of the reed has and it's more likely to stay in motion, uh, like to, it's gonna exceed the spring tension, essentially, of this reed. That's what the reed is, is a piece of spring. So it'll, it'll oscillate further in each direction, um, and the moment will be longer. It'll take longer to go from those two extremes. The longer it takes to go from those two extremes, the slower the, it, it's moving, essentially, the lower the frequency of its vibrations, lower frequency, lower pitch, right? So. Scraping material away from the base weakens it and makes the, makes the tip relatively heavier than the base and essentially shifts the mass of the reed forward, relatively speaking. 
Um, or you can add weight like solder or blue tack. We'll do something with blue tack. That will lower the pitch of the reed. So by weighting the tip, you'll see that on some harmonicas, and this is a, this B harmonica has weighted tips. So when they machined this reed, they machined away a whole bunch of the middle of the reed and they left a fairly substantial hunk of metal in the end, um, probably the same thickness as the, uh, the base. When they machined it away, they left this here so that way you'd be weighted. So relatively speaking, this, this reed is gonna be lower than one of equal length. You know, none of these are equal length, but you get the general idea. This'll be a lower tuned reed, not just because it's longer, because the weight is shifted relatively towards the tip of the reed with the weight. You'll see on some low tuned harmonicas, um, like the Seidel, um, like the, I got a low C from Seidel. Um, and there's actually another hunk of metal that's welded onto the tips of the reeds to give them extra weight. So that's um, another way you can do it. You can add solder, um, blue tack works, and we'll do blue tack to convert this back to Richter tuning afterwards. The way that you tune something up in pitch is the opposite. So you could add solder to create a stiffer joint at the base. I found that pretty unreliable. Um, it doesn't really work very well. That's why you can't use blue tack. It would just actually deaden the vibrations if you put it towards the base. Uh, but some people, if you get a really good solder on there, you can, can lower, or sorry, raise the pitch of the reed by stiffening the, the base of the reed. However, typically when we wanna raise the pitch of the reed, we take material away from the tip of the reed, right? So when we take material away from the tip, we make the tip lighter, reduce the amount of inertia and momentum that it has, and shift the relative weight of the reed towards the base. So it's lighter at the tip by ratio to the, um, to the spring, springiness back here. So when it vibrates, it's less likely, or it'll, um, it'll vibrate quicker, right? Because there's less weight to carry that tip of the reed in such a big arc. So it'll vibrate faster, faster vibrations, higher frequency of vibrations, higher frequency, higher pitch, right? So that's, that's what we're trying to accomplish. So we're trying to go up a half step. So again, let's check the tuning of that, that note on uh, five. So we're a little sharp, actually. In fact, the whole thing was a little sharp. I might have retuned this at some time at 443. I kind of left my tuner at default here to see what it would look like. Let me see what it looks like at 443. not in perfect tuning this might actually be an equal temperament not in uh, or I might have retuned it to uh, to like adjust intonation but either way we're just going to work with them on one read and try to bring that up to where we want it to be so essentially what we're going to do is we're going to take let me see here awesome so we're going to take the file and we're gonna scrape a little bit of material away from the tip of this reed, okay? I'm just trying to be gentle with it, right? You're trying to focus your the energy of your filing as close to the tip as possible, right? It's not gonna take a lot of material to do this, okay? As close to the tip as possible without damaging the tip of the reed. It is typically easier to go against the reed, although very carefully, because um, this way sometimes leaves little burrs that stick out and catch, although they break off. So once you filed a little bit, we're just gonna move a little bit at a time. You'll see how this goes. We plink it. Plinking it is important. You can plink it with your piece of paper as well. That works fine. Okay. Right. Plinking is important because anytime that you do work on a reed, you're stressing the metal and you wanna release that. So let's see what that five draw sounds like now. So it's about 12 cents sharp. So we haven't gone very far, but you get the idea. Um, some good advice uh, that you'd find from uh, like those Andrew Zajac videos. Uh, don't go too fast. Don't try to go too high. Uh, or don't, don't try to go all the way all at once. Because going all the way all at once is a great recipe for going too far. So we're filing a little bit off the tip there. Let's see how far we've gone now. Plink it. About 15 cents. So we're going to move it about five cents at a time at this rate. Now, just other methods that you could use, like I said, the ceramic file. I do like the ceramic file because it tends to be really light and you can um, put some pressure on it and get a nice smooth motion. Um, it is a smaller movement by comparison to the grow by file. That's a lot faster with the grow by file. 
So yeah, I only went up a few cents there, right? Compared to the grow by, grow by file, which pushed us a lot further. Something like a rotary tool like this one here. Turn off, make sure my speed's not too high. I don't know what I had it set at before. There we go. So this, something like this, you can just take and touch to the base. You can use your little rotary tool from Harbor Freight or anything like that as well. I like these polishing tips. They work pretty well, even on stainless steel. So there we go. We see we went up quite a bit that time. So you can use a variety of different tools to make this, make this happen. Let's just keep going with the file. You want to have that support under there, whether it's your piece of paper or whether it's your plinker. Partly this is to, um, to it's to support the reed so that the reed doesn't, you know, fall back into the slot, right? But it's also so that way you don't accidentally nick one of the other reeds as you're going. I don't do a lot of work with just the file anymore, so this is a, a fun exercise for me. I mean, I'm almost always using the rotary tool. So we'll speed up the process and do it that way. And then we'll fine tune it when we get there. Keeping an eye on a tuner. Um, you know what, and this is the other thing, not everyone has a software tuner. So uh, let me just show you what you could be using as well. What works really great for this is just your standard uh, guitar tuner. There we go, got one in the drawer here. This is a standard guitar tuner. All you really need to worry about is whether or not the guitar tuner has the ability to calibrate, right? So you can set it to 442, 443, 440, right? And you can tune to sort of a standard. A lot of harmonicas are tuned to 442 or 443 as a standard, okay? So um, when we're doing this country tuned, we don't have to worry about being like super duper accurate, but something like this will do the trick. So, I mean, if we left it at, you know, 443, which is what I tune most of my harmonicas to, right? And I'll set this down so you can see that as well. It's pretty straightforward. You can sort of see how we're going. Right, it's bouncing all over the place between E and F because it's not quite where we need it to be yet. Okay. Let's keep going. I like these polishing discs just because they tend to do a very smooth job of the reed. You don't have any gouges in it, any edges. So I see we're getting pretty close there. We're only 20 cents or so shy of where we want to be. Let's get a little closer with this. That's where these Harbor Freight things come in handy. You can go a lot further, a lot faster. Eight cents shy, right? Let's do one more touch. And if we, maybe we'll overshoot just slightly and I'll show you how to bring it back down. There we go, about three cents over. But before we get too worried about three cents over, make sure we give the, the reed a good plink to make sure that we've released any excess energy. It may still be three cents over, but we'll get a good idea of where it's supposed to be sitting. Three or four cents over, that's good. Okay, so if we wanted to bring this down, supporting the reed with your support tool, like a feeler gauge or a piece of paper, right? Okay, getting in there with the file. In this case, we want to take material off the base of the reed. If you have a grow bay file, something like this, we're taking material away from the base towards the edges of the reed. Doesn't take a lot. If you're using a draw scraper, that's going to be too much, right? See how much that came down, right? Other things you can use, um, a draw scraper or um, like a, a, a sharp knife, you know, a razor blade. You can use that to scrape a little material away from the, the tip or the base of a reed. Okay. Now we're getting pretty close. couple cents over there so yeah, you can see the idea they can go up and down up and down if you try to go half the distance that you think you need to go you'll probably be serving yourself well still a couple cents there let's just plink it before we go ahead and tune it pretty 
pretty good. Pretty good. So if, the harder you play, you'll notice it's closer to in tune. Playing really light, it goes up. So it's about finding that balance of where you play, making sure that you're consistent across the harmonica and getting them all to the right spot. Still a couple cents sharp. And then we're going to reverse this process really quickly. And we'll show you how easy that it can be. So we'll call that a win. All right, so what have we done? We've essentially changed that tuning to, uh, to a, a D major 7 as opposed to a, or a, a D, yeah, D major 7 as opposed to a D dominant 7 or D7, right? Right? So uh, I don't play a lot of country tuning, but now you've got access to, uh, trying not to lose mustache hairs here. Now you've got access to, um, let's see. It's hard to play without covers. <laughs> Anyway, so you got your seven there. I'm not going to claim to be a fantastic player or anything. I'm just, I just like tinkering with these things for sure. So that is the way you can get it to a uh, country tuning. It's one reed that needs to be worked on. Just that five draw, and we're taking material away from the tip to raise it up. Now, as far as going the other direction, you have other options. We could scrape material away from the base and bring it back down. We could add solder to the tip, which is a challenging process that requires usually some flux and some time and your, your solder is going to take it down like an octave sometimes when you put way too much solder on there and then you got to file it all the way to go back up and then you've gone too far and you got to add solder. It's a challenging process. It's worth doing if you're going a really long way. If you're tuning it quite a fair distance up or down, it can be really advantageous to, uh, to use the solder so that way you're not stressing the readout, you're not damaging. It's an additive process as opposed to a destructive process, a subtractive process where you're taking material away. Um, but blue sticky tack, you know, this stuff comes in these packages, right? The stuff we use to, uh, to stick things to the walls of our, of our, of our room without nails, you know, that stuff, right? So we can take this stuff here and we can use this to weight the reeds. And it's been like tons of players do this. This is not like a, <laughs> as simple as, and, and DIY as this sounds, this is not like a cheat in, in any real sense. Pros are doing this when they want to quickly retune a reed uh, for the purposes of experimenting or even just leaving it that way. You would be surprised how long this lasts. So I'm going to roll it out into a very, very, very thin, almost hair-like snake of blue tack because we need a very small amount of it. So let's take, say, that amount. We could always add and subtract and, and go from there. So we're going to take this little bit of tack. That's probably not going to be enough, but... You get the idea. So this five draw right now is tuned to F and we're going to want to bring it back down to E. So if we put our support under the tip, and if your fingers are not oily, this process can be really annoying because your the blue tack will want to stick to your fingers. Um, so having really dry skin can be a problem. <laughs> All right, so let's wait the tip and see how far that comes down. Okay, so we got the. We just want to make sure that the blue tack isn't isn't overlapping with the edges of the hole in any way. Okay. So let me let me show you up on the screen here, because this might be might be easier to get a good look at what's happening. Okay, so that blue sticky tack is just stuck there on draw read number five. So let's see what that does to that note. Okay. Look at that, we're almost there. We're only eight cents, only eight cents over. So we got really, really close. So let's snag a little bit. And I'll show you another way we can finesse this too, um, because 
it's not a permanent change. So the nice thing about using sticky tack is, well, there's, there's a bunch of neat things. One, it can be done really, really quickly. I'm just gonna add a little bit of sticky tack. I don't know if that's gonna be enough. Added a little extra piece on top. One, it's quick. Oh, we've gone too far. Okay, perfect. We've gone too far, and I say perfect because I'm gonna show you something else. Blue sticky tack is nice because one, it is cheap. It's readily available. You can buy it at an office supply store or at, I don't know, Spencer's Gifts, wherever you buy your posters for your wall. So um, simple stuff, okay? Two, it's relatively permanent. And by permanent, I mean like it'll last forever. I've had harmonicas that I forgot that I did this to. I was testing it out and they've been in there for ages. And it wasn't until like I opened them up months and months and months later to retune them and to do something else. And I'm like, hey, I hadn't even finished this harp. I just, I just blew tack to these two reeds. To, to test it and I just left it there and it's been, I've been performing with it and it's been fine. <laughs> so <laughs> every now and then that happens. So we're a little bit flat. Now, remember what we were doing before when we were retuning the reed itself, right? When we wanted the pitch of the reed to go up, we wanted to remove material from the base, uh, sorry, from the tip. Why? Because we wanted to shift the relative weight of the reed towards the base, right? Well, we can do that because we have a movable weight now, essentially, on our, the end of our reed. So all we've got to do is take your finger and just kind of drag that blob of blue tack down a little bit towards the base of the reed. We've just shifted it down ever so slightly. Let's see if that's enough. See, now we're a few cents over, right? So again, we don't have to, uh oh, more, more uh, tack is required. Just get in with your finger and slowly push that up a little bit. Only four cents over now. Oh, sorry, bumping the camera there. I'm giving you motion sickness, I apologize. Let's see. Really close, a couple cents under. So again, once you've got this set, it stays pretty good. There we go, E5, okay? So it can be that simple um, to tune it back down. Now we've got a standard tuned harmonica. Right, everything is set, everything's good to go. Nothing to worry about there, right? That's easy. And if you want it to go back to country tuning, right, all you do is slide off that little piece of blue sticky tack. With your, I'm gonna rub it all off so it's off. It's the blue tack is now up here on my uh, on my uh, support there. So now we've got an open open read again. And we're right back up to F. Now, you'll notice it's a little bit light. It's a little bit low. That's likely just because of the um, we hadn't let the metal set in from our initial retuning. And the reeds are warmed up. We haven't really done too much with it. So it's, it's a good idea when you're doing tuning to make sure your harp is warm. But again, so if we wanted to bring this up in tuning, taking material away from the base, filing it away, right? Or from the tip, sorry, to bring it up in tune. Right, so there's our F5. And did I lose my little piece of tack? Well, there's my little piece of tack again. So again, let's, I got it stuck to my thumb now. I'm gonna stick that on, back onto the reed. Didn't quite stuck, stuck to my finger instead. Let's see if I can get it to sit on the center of the reed there. There we go. There it is, right there on the center of the reed. A few cents flat of E, and again, it's just a matter of massaging it down a little bit. You know, a little for a little too much, a little you know. It's but it's not destructive, right? You can just add this little bit of sticky tack and keep finding until you find that right spot. It's like tuning a guitar. <laughs> a little up, a little down, until you find the right spot. There we go. So now this is a country tuned C harp. I say this is back to a Richter tuned B harmonica, right?
or the Golden Melody. So that's how simple it can be. So you can have this in your gig bag ready to go as a B Richter tune harp. All ready to go and then it's like, oh, country tuning time. Theoretically, ready? Pop that off. Reattach your cover plates. There you go. So that is that is how easy it can be. And like I said, there's a couple ways to do it. We could go manually and, and retune it down by scraping material away, but it is just as easy to take that little blob of blue sticky tack, stick it back on there. Let me show this again. There it is, stuck back on there. Oh, that's so close. I almost nailed it that time. Well, I moved it up, not down. There we go. I moved it the wrong way. <laughs> so we moved it down in pitch. We want to move it this way. Da, 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 da. See, now it's too high. And this is, again, just like tuning your guitar. You can sort of massage it around until you find the right spot. That's pretty darn close. We can leave it there. Pretty good. There we go. So there you go, country tuned harmonica in uh, so many tiny steps. I think the only other, what was the other one we talked about? Uh, Melody Maker. Um, you can get away with doing this on your other notes as well. If you wanted to tune that, um, that three blow up as well, you could, right? And get like a Patty Richter kind of thing. I think that's what they do mostly for Melody Maker. Um, it's like a combination of Patty Richter and country tuning, if I recall correctly. So yeah, you could bring that one up and, and get that get that move. Um, do, it, do it the same way. Um, but yeah, that's really all there is to it for country tuning. So um, that's that's it. We're gonna I'm gonna leave this one in uh, with the little sticker on there. Actually, you know what? I have myself a B in Richter, a couple Bs in Richter already. I may as well leave this in country tuning. So I'll just clean off that little bit of sticky tack. Put this off to the side. Okay. There we go. F, ready to go for country tuning. Cover plates back on. So if anyone was wanting to experiment with doing country tuning on a harmonica, it, it's easy to do. And, uh, you know, if you have a cheaper harp, and you, that might make you feel a little more confident if you get yourself a little cheapo... Delta Frost or, uh, you know, a blues band, you know, one of those cheap $9, even an East Top. I have an East Top on the table I was thinking of using for this too. Um, it's, people don't worry so much about damaging it when they're, it's an inexpensive harp. You wouldn't want to take your, like, Richard's Light custom out of the closet and be like, yeah, I'm just going to just do this myself. I mean, you could. But don't go undoing the work of the pros. <laughs> they're way better than I am at this. All right. But yeah, country tuning is a really easy one to try. So if you ever wanted to try a country harp, that's the way you do it. And then you have it. I don't play a lot of country tune stuff. So I'm by no means, I'm not really a great harmonica player to begin with, but I'm certainly not proficient with country tuning. But it's nice to have. Chestnuts roasting and the open fire comes to mind. I always liked uh, um, When You Wish Upon a Star. That It's a great note. And like Todd was saying, you can always, you can always just bend it down. Your blue scale still there, right? Yeah. It's awkward because the muscle memory goes out the window. Yeah, 
yeah, it's there. Yeah. So, um, fun. It's a fun tuning. I recommend it. If you have a harp at home and you want to give that a try, go for it. Um, I'll stick around for a second there. I probably will take off in the next 10 minutes. But if there is anyone watching that has a question, I don't want to discourage them. I know it's pretty quiet right now. And I'm going to just quick hit a quick refresh on the harp form here. Just in case anyone typed in there. Nope, looks, looks pretty quiet. So hopefully, if anyone was curious how you go about retuning uh, harmonica from... Uh, from Richter tuning to country tuning, that gives you an idea with a couple different views of, of what's happening. But yeah, if someone, oh, where did I get the software tuner from? Good question, Carl. Um, I'm using Chromatia. Chromatia tuner is, let me just grab the link for you. I will pull open the, the details. Um, I'm just using OBS like uh, to, to share this to my screen, uh, which works quite nicely, but let me copy this from FJM software. It's these guys here. And the one that you want, let's see here, is uh, they just released version 4.2. There it is. I'll copy and paste this into the chat as well. Now I could I could go all day about the sorry it's up there the cool things that this tuner can do um, that something like this can't do um, but the key for me it's it's right now this thing's just in equal temperament mode so it's not doing anything really fancy I have it set to for tuning to a equals four forty three is where I've got it but I could do that on this harp too right so over here it's easy enough just make sure you hit your calibration adjustments and tune it to whatever your standard is that you're going to use. Um, but the nice thing about Chromatia is there are places, and if you do some searches uh, for, oh, you know what? I want to say it's a Pat Masson thing, but I'm not sure. There's, um, there's some links where you can download files for Chromatia Tuner, so you can upload your own tuning calibration setups. And I wish I could show you exactly what that looks like um, on this end, but it doesn't let me screen capture this portion of the screen that well. But uh, essentially, I can set it to... Um, my, my, like I've got a custom file in there for power draw, you know, with a 19 limit, just intonation tuning, right? So what that means is that normally when you're tuning the harmonica, right, your whole, uh, let's see, I've got something, well, I'll just point it out here. Usually, okay, when you're tuning it, you tune something like whole four and you make sure that's bang on, right? And you tune your, your octaves, like your if this was a C harmonica, your C notes, you'd want to be bang on, right? With C, zero on the dial, right? And your fifth, right? Your fifth, you want to be, it was a couple cents, just a, just a hair flat, just a little bit, right? But your third, an actual just intonation third is nowhere near equal temperament third. It's like 14 cents flat, something like 12 or 14 cents flat. So usually what you do in a tuner like this is you look at, like on, on this, this tuner, is I'd be looking at my... Okay, this E's bang on. There, there's my A. My fifth is a little bit flat, that's okay, but my third... And I'm trying to balance the needle about there, right? A few cents flat. One thing that... Um, Andrew Zajac might suggest on his videos, and some others I've seen this too, they'll just bump up the ratio by, you know, to 444. Or sorry, it's the other way around. Bump it down. So, say 440, 441. And try to get your needle in the center on 441, and then go back to 443. And tune your fifth up and down. So you can do that, and you can have a pattern that you memorize and, and work through it. The nice thing about Chromatia Tuner on the other hand, up here, is that I can essentially pre-program that in. So if I have a just intonation, and essentially I want to say I'm tuning, in this case, a D harmonica, and I would do a little bit of math in the background to figure out what note I want. I have a spreadsheet. Someone could send me a message on the form, and I would I would send them my uh, my way of calculating it. It's a it's not a perfect system. You can just leave it as A equals 443, and it does work quite nicely. 
So just leave it as 443 or 442 or whatever your tuning standard is. But what I take, I want to be a little bit more exact usually. So what I'll do is I'll grab, um, I'm, I'm on my keyboard here. I'm going to change. I got a spreadsheet in the background. I'm working on a D harmonica. So D, D4 is my bass note, right? So if A is 443 is my standard, then D5, which is four below, is kind of where my reference point's going to be for this harmonica. And it calculates it for me. Essentially, the correct hertz on a piano for D in equal temperament is 591.334, blah, 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 blah. Who cares? It's a big, long number. So essentially, I just copy and paste that into my tuner. I don't have to worry about it after that. I've pasted it in there. And now that it's in there, and I say that D5 is that number, I use that as my reference. Now this harmonica is tuned to D5. So I'll then tune that D5 to be perfect. But watch what happens with my uh, my fifth, for example, in, in second position. So we got my... The A is bang on, right? Remember that one we had to adjust before, right? So look at, if you look at the tuner up top versus the tuner down below. Okay, so the tuner up top, here's my... Uh, And that's set to 440 right now. That's 443 where we actually want it. See, my A is actually in tune. And the tuners agree. This tuner agrees with that tuner. Right? And my fifth. These tuners both agree that that note is flat and needs to be fixed, right? But what about my third that I would use to naturally have to make flat? Okay, so the tuner up in the corner here, right? This, the, the software tuner is doing that calculation for me. So I don't have to go, oh, I gotta make sure I hit the needle at, you know, 15 cents flat and it's bouncing around, it's not quite there. The, the software tuner will say, bang on, and I'll be able to tune to zero, tune to the green, right, on the software tuner and make sure it lines up. The caveat is you need to do a little bit of math in the background to make sure you're, you're selecting the correct starting point. As long as you start from the right place, then it sets everything else up for you and it works very nicely. So it does make tuning nice, equal, or nice just intonation temperament tuning very clean. If you're working on a country tuned harmonica uh, that's in equal temperament, like the Golden Melody, or a lot of the Suzuki harps that are in equal temperament, it's easy. I mean, you use this uh, guitar tuner and just always tune to the, like, always aim for the green dot or you can uh, select if you're using a software tumor like chromatia you just select equal temperance and just make sure you use your main reference of a4 is whatever a4 is equal to it's in this case we have 443 so a4 is 443 i type that into my tuner unfortunately you can't see that but there it is and these tuners should more or less agree with each other The other nice thing about the software tuner is I can actually record measurements so I can get like a text file of all my measurements so I can tune an instrument beforehand, blow all of the notes, see exactly where it sits with the covers on, take the covers off, blow all those reeds again and say, okay, it's out by, you know, with the covers are having this impact on the reeds. As soon as I put them on, they go up by this amount or down by this amount or wherever it happens to be. And that way, when I'm tuning with the reed plates off, I can be a little bit more exact in getting it to where it's going to be once the harmonica is reassembled. So that seems to work pretty well for me. I like doing it that way. So I get the best of both worlds, really. I can, I can do the nice by ear equal beat free tuning, but I can also rely on the tuner to tell me exactly where those notes are supposed to be. All right, cool. Well, it's uh, one o'clock here in Manitoba. So I am going to wrap things up and uh, clean up the desk a little bit. I've got, um, I do, I do uh, open harp surgery. This is the, um, this, this setup here that I do with harmonica work. I do every Monday nights on Twitch. So I don't usually stream on YouTube. So if you're subscribing here, that's cool. But um, you probably won't get notifications for these videos 
like the regular Monday nights. That's something I do on, on Twitch. I'm an affiliate on Twitch. So that's, uh, that's where I do my live streams there. Uh, my Patreon subscribers have access to all the VODs, but for the most part, it's like an, it's like a three hour streams of me tuning harmonicas, which is a little tedious and a little niche. So, I mean, it's up to you guys if you're interested in that sort of thing, but it is something that is available uh, on twitch.tv slash woozle effect. Um, I'll make sure there's a link in the video description if anyone's interested in that. Um, and I do uh, live stream requests with the harmonica and the uh, like cigar box guitar and ammo can guitar and toaster guitar and stuff that are on the wall behind me. I do that on Saturday nights. That's my, this is my uh, quarantine uh, good time. I can't play in public. So this is uh, my way of keeping myself entertained. So feel free to jump in if you're interested in that sort of thing. Um, that's all I got. I think we're good to go. Thank you very much. Um, I usually have closing credits and all that, but we're not on Twitch, so none of those commands are going to work, so I'm just going to let that go. I'm going to say thanks a lot, and hopefully everyone has a good one. Uh, you know what? And just before I run away, I'm going to hit refresh on the screen one more time, just in case there's a question in the... No, nothing in the forum there, so that's good. Fantastic. Carl, thanks for stopping by. Anyone else who's uh, lurking away? I see there's a couple. Thank you for being here. I appreciate it. Um, hopefully you learned something. Um, it's, it's, it's fun to be able to experiment with things like country tuning. It's easy to do and it's easy to, uh, to test these things, do the tuning and then use something like blue tack. So it's reversible. And if ever you want to try alternate tunings, weird things, uh, power draw and power bender tunings, uh, most of those require tuning down, not tuning up. So you can do almost the entire conversion, even will wild tuning. You can do a lot of testing with just blue tack and not actually mangling your harmonica. So if you want to try Patty Richter is another. If you want to try Patty Richter? That's another fun one you can do. And Melody Maker. Um, probably we could probably do almost everything with Blue Tack if we really wanted to. So that's a lot of fun. Awesome. Thanks a lot for watching. Hopefully uh, I helped someone. And uh, we'll see you in the future, my friends. Cheers. Bye bye. I am gonna hit the credit screen, but there won't be credits. Cheers. <laughs> Thank you.